Welcome back. I'm George. And today we're going to do the, uh, the, the video that uh, we promised about pulse wave modulation. Now, before we get to that, uh, please, we appreciate all of your support. Uh, so if you get a chance, subscribe, uh, share us with your friends, like us on Facebook, do all those great things. That's the only way we stay alive and we definitely appreciate it. And the comments, please comment below. Um, all of this information comes from, believe it or not, comments and interactions with other people about what's more important right now. Um, and now we were looking at uh, ways to control the heating element in a distilling process, brewing process, or whatever process you have. And uh, for a long time now, we've had like the very smart one is the PID controller. Uh, and you're familiar, most of you are familiar with that. And these can run anywhere from, oh, 300 to 400 bucks. But you know, watch the videos. We've got some videos where we show you how to put these together for mm, probably about 60, 70 bucks yourself. Um, and what they have is they have the feedback mechanism it controls your heating element and the feedback mechanism is a thermocouple. So it's just like the cruise control in your car. You know, you set it and you, your engine knows with your transmission, it knows kind of how fast to go to get to where it, and it gets there and it levels out and it stays. Uh, now that's what a PID controller does theoretically. Um, it's a little bit better than that. Uh, now, but if you take out, if you remove the feedback mechanism, which is the thermocouple, because the thermocouple goes in the top of the column and it constantly tests the temperature. It takes the temperature. And then it does a correction factor, you know, an, an error rate, and, and it applies a certain percentage of power to your element to, of course, get it there or keep it there, or whatever the case may be. But if you remove this, well then you really have a dumb terminal um, because a PID requires the feedback mechanism just like your cruise control. Now, a question came up and you know can we use pulse wave modulation and in pulse wave modulation think of it like this you know that in 120 volts AC or 240 volts AC you know you've got the sine wave and uh, it's 60 cycles a second and uh, but if you can interrupt that digitally and the duty cycle between two time frames if you can interrupt that signal digitally from on to off and in that duty cycle, 25%, 26%, 27%, 28% on, and you know the, the rest off. Well, well, then what we find is is that the apparent power or the average power and amperage is reduced or increased proportionately based on that duty cycle. So I try to look for a simple explanation. And the, the easiest one I could find is where I started. Now, first of all, we had folks that uh, wrote in and said, what about this? And I'm like, oh, I'm going to look into that. So it's been about three months now that I've been on this. Uh, and Ray even mentioned to me, he goes, George, there's got to be another way for those who don't want a PID. And I was like, absolutely. So here's what I did. I built one. And this is a real base, simple model. And I'm going to show you exactly how to build it, what you need in order to get that. But here's the theory behind it, the principle. Now, on your stove... If you have an electric stove and you turn the dial on, it kind of made you made me wonder. I was like, okay, well, if when I turn the dial on, I know there's a lot of amperage and it's actually 240 volts. So well, why does the ring only get so hot based on how far up I, I turn it, but I'm not producing any heat at the switching mechanism or at the control, at the control knob, um, but I'm controlling the heat the amperage and the voltage in the element. I was like, how does that happen? So I started to do the research. It's called an infinite switch. Um, it, you might see these, these are, it might be familiar. Um, a lot of your ranges have them. Now this one just happens to be a basic utility model. But it's got two hot wires, a load one and a load two that goes in, and it's got a heater one and a heater two that go out to the heater element. And as you turn this, what it starts to do is it adjusts that pulse. And I'm going to show you this because I took one apart just so I could show you. What it does is it takes that sine wave and by on off, it, not directly, but it can be considered a pulse wave modulator. Now, let me, let me get close and show you this. What it does is 
it has a bi-metal connector right in here. And what it does is when the power comes on and the knob's turned on, it applies the power through these contacts and it makes those hot. But after a few seconds, depending on where the knob is adjusted, this bimetal connector here heats up and deforms and causes the circuit to open. Now, once in a few more seconds after that, and this is all based on science and the way they've designed these, uh, after a period of time, that bimetal starts to cool off, it makes that connection again, and boom, you again have power. And then you can also turn it all the way up where that bimetal, as it starts to deform, will not deform enough to turn off, so you have it on high, which is 100% power, and that's where your ring starts to turn red. Now, that kind of makes sense. Well, I figured if I'm able to control the stove or the oven in that fashion, well then, why can I not control a heater element in that fashion? And it really made sense. So, what we have is, is in this particular case, when you turn your, I'll take this one, when you turn the stove on to low, in most cases, the power runs through here for oh, about eight seconds, five seconds, and then it shuts off. The switch will shut off, and so your ring is warm, and about 12 to 18, maybe 20 seconds later, it comes back on because that bimetal cools down and goes back to its rigid frame and therefore, it comes back, up, you know, yeah, it goes back to its rigid frame and then it makes that connection. And then after about six or seven seconds, it deforms again, breaks that connection, so you get more power. So what you've got is, is you've got power on, power off, power on, power off. Now some will argue that power on, power off is just an on off switch. Well it is. but when it happens in that cycle, the average power and the average amp, uh, yeah, amperage um, is adjusted accordingly. So your circuit sees 100% of it, but it reacts only to the percentage in the duty cycle that it's on. Now, I, I hope I haven't lost anybody, but we're going to put this to the test, uh, and I'm going to show you what you need first. And then uh, after that, we'll do another video about how to put these together. But we first got to do one about how it actually operates. And we're going to test it right here in front of you so you can see. So what you'll need is you'll need, of course, uh, a receptacle to plug into. You're going to need oh, a box. And I got one of these. These run me about, oh, I don't know, about, uh, 19 bucks on Amazon or eBay. I can't remember. There's like a four by... Uh, six by eight. <laughs> the pulse wave, pulse wave modulator. This is a 4,000 watt uh, capacity pulse wave modulator. And what it has on it, it's got a small uh, potentiometer which takes a digital or takes an analog signal and electronically changes that and digitally controls the triac or the transistors in here that only allow a certain amount of that percentage, that power in that cycle to propagate through the wires. So I've got an on again, off again, on again, off again, and I can adjust that. And every time I adjust that, my volts will increase and my amperage will increase proportionately. And when I turn it down, they will both go down proportionately. And then the other thing that I got is, uh, and these run about seven, eight bucks or so, and this is a, a digital multimeter, a digital multimeter. This one's made by uh, DROK Connection, DROK Connection. Uh, you can find these all over Amazon. You can find them all over the web. Now, they come with this unique little, uh, I, it looks like a small round magnet with two leads on it. So they're real easy to, uh, to wire because it's got you know, two for a hot and a neutral, and it's got two for these. And what this does is, those of you who are familiar with an amp meter, you know, if you put an amp meter, and that's what that clip is, that's a clamp amp meter, 
and it's running, you clamp it around the load wire. Only one wire. If you clamp it around two wires, you get nothing. But what happens is, is as, as energy and electricity flows through that wire, it's going to make, it, there'll be a magnetic field that it's, develops. And what this amp clamp does is it measures that field based on how fast that electricity is going through and it gives you a reading in amperage. And that's on your amp clamp. Now, also, like mathematically, inside your amp meter, that same thing takes place because this just rests over top of the wire. And then these two wires are connected to your amp meter and it'll measure the amperage in that wire when it's operating. Now, what's other interesting about that is it'll also tell you what the voltage is running through here because it voltage is directly proportionate with the amperage and, and it will show you that. So you'll be able to look on your screen and tell what the volts are and what the amperage is. Now, depending on how you wire it, and I'll show you that too, because you can wire it directly where it shows you what the voltage is coming in. Or you can wire it to see what the voltage is going out. But in any case, it will always tell you what the amperage is going through the system. That's all I got. Hey, until next time, please again, like us, share, subscribe, and uh, happy distilling.